a better day try? Can I try? We are talking, talking. Can you hear us right now? Can you hear me? You can, can hear, hear us me? all great. I hope so. Have What's I up? The microphone? <laughs> What's up, guys? Those sultry sounds are the sounds of Case the Joint. My guest today on the third episode of Rhythm and Cues. Are you guys honored? Oh, Jesus. happy to be here. Absolutely. First we are joined. Where the hell we are. I'm, I'm just going to have you all say your name into the mic just so the audience can get to know you a little bit more. Let's start with you, Kyle. Okay. My name is Kyle. I play guitar and sing. And my name is Oliver. I am the drummer. And I'm Dave. Uh, I sing and uh, play guitar. Or if you, the when you asked me at the show uh, last Friday, I, I play rock and roll and sing. Rock and roll and sing. No, nobody can see your pose. But that's. Oh. <laughs> I'm Zach. I play. He's bass. posing for the mic, you guys. There's uh, sparklers going off. You know, explosions in the background. Complete pandemonium. Oh, it's crazy the, here. I know. In this packed studio, of four. Well, you know, my, my chair equals five and a half, but it's a whole different thing. <laughs> it's a good thing there's no fire extinguishers in here. No, no, of course not, you know, especially not with those beards. Am I right? <laughs> there's a collection of beards, and I feel like even if we just sh shaved off, like, a part of it, it would just be kindling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Very, very hairy group of men. <laughs> we, we, we could do so much, like, in, in various shelters throughout the city, just by, like, the heat that our hair would radiate. It would just, like, be like an effervescent flame, like the Olympic flame. Homeless problem? No problem. No problem at all. Well, now, now I feel like I'm not doing enough for my community. Absolutely. I, have, I have hair by the plenty. So th maybe that's what Movember is for, just to like get all like the shavings and stuff, you know? Yeah, I need at least three months, though, to shave it all off. At least it, three months. It takes that long. You have to have like a timeline? You have to pre-book the hair yeah, on well, label? It's, it's a, I, I run out of clippers. <laughs> like, one clipper goes bad. Okay, that's done. <laughs> Oliver's chest is so hairy. You can't even, like, it's Me, ridiculous. When we, first, when we first started doing this band, Dave was so sure he had a bet. He said, I, I am the hairiest man in this band, and I... I fronted on him and i said no you're not i'm so sure we bet what was it like your guys's way of drawing straws to figure out like who could do the stuff this they is, want this is an alpha test for sure well i knew we didn't have the biggest stick so i, I said at least i could have <laughs> the hairiest body exactly uh, and then I, I lifted my shirt in all my glory <laughs> i cried i cried did, is, sure. is, is this how you guys create songs is this right there well i mean that, that's compare? how i create songs in my solo career of course i i, I make oliver show me his chest hair and yeah. i cry and then i write a sad song about it yeah Tears of joy. Tears of joy. Exactly. For me, I don't. I don't think. I, I don't think I write songs. I just show up and I <laughs> just hit things. Show up and hit things, man. <laughs> That's what he does. Like you always do. Like I shouldn't get a writing credit on any of our albums. No, maybe maybe just like a post credit. Yeah, you heard it first, guys. It, it's like when they have Star Wars at the end. The credits take like thirty minutes. You know, you could be like yeah. one of the PAs there. It's like, yeah, I'm like one of the ones that's like a special thanks to. Like, oh, not of course. Even, I didn't even work on it. I just get a thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That means more money for us, Kyle. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, that, you guys that, are making money? <laughs> well, shut up, shut up. You guys are getting paid? I know, right? Is this what happened? I don't know. Just looking around frantically, you guys, <laughs> for those of you who can only listen, which is all of you. Um, so, yeah, this is, that was actually leads into my first question because uh, I've seen you guys play three times, all fantastic shows. I'm not just saying that, even though I've said that the past two times <laughs> well, the other guests have been on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love your but, honesty. No, but here's the thing. I, I think it's important to kind of do a case study, for lack of a better term where you go and see something live and you can feel the energy. It's hard to replicate the energy, which is why I think live albums are making such a comeback and why vinyl is making such a comeback. And what you guys do, I think, is even more interesting because you guys provide a show, meaning that your entrance is one of the like most... Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to say like intrinsic, but like you basically throw on masks, you know, like you're about to like case the joint, you know, rob the place. Basically, and then you jump on stage, and then you know, obviously it makes sense, you know, the polyester suits, yeah. and uh, you know, <laughs> mine's cotton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's Armani wool. Thank you. Exactly. Mine, mine was I'm made out of my own body hair. Oh, stuff. absolutely. I know. It's it's like you guys got just, just you know came back from like a semi formal dance, and just right there. <laughs> it's 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 like the wedding singer needed backup singers. <laughs> so yeah. anyways. I mean, my date didn't show up, so I had nothing else better to do. So. Yeah, man. <laughs> when it's, your cousin doesn't show up, when you invite, I mean, that's just it's embarrassing. 
So I I'm, I want to guess that that was Dave's idea that like to have like the mask thing or, or whose idea was that? I actually don't know whose idea was the mask. I think okay, so uh, I had this idea for the band name Case the Joint right. for a while, and then uh, we didn't have a band name. We were kind of going through through phases, and I brought it up, and it stuck. And then I think it just kind of naturally went from there. Everybody, you know, we just decided like, what if we up the show a little bit and up the performance? And I mean like. Knowing how we are, right? I'm sure it started off like a joke. Like, well, we should come in, like, we're, we just robbed a bank, and, like, we should have a, a bag full of money, and, like, you know, and, uh, and do all this stuff. And then, like, the idea, I'm not sure if it was mine, but I know I thought about it before, but it may not have been mine, where, like, someone's on stage doing something, and then you kick them off, and then you take their instruments. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, like, really? That's, that's, it's just so funny. And, like, also, but we didn't think it was going to be funny. We thought people were going to, like, be shocked when we first did it. We first did it, people laughed. And we're like, a, right. lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of laughs. It was kind of off. And we're like, okay. But was it kind of obvious? It's like when little kids like stack up on top of each other with the disguise, and, like <laughs> oh, pretend to be an adult. Kind of sure. <laughs> it's, Absolutely. We're not great actors, uh, and so like when we run on the stage, <laughs> you can. It's like I, I could tell you were a thespian right yeah. when I walk. Oh, you yes, know. I, 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 yeah, I was my was my. Ready. I mean, oh, we had, absolutely. We had all these like, lines ready to go. Every single time, we're like, okay, we're, we're going to say this, we're going to do that. But then when we get in there, <laughs> the adrenaline's just running. So it ends up just being, <laughs> just saying nothing, but you're just yelling. Because, so, yeah, like you said, the adrenaline's going. I think sometimes it's kind of hard to find your footing. Well, and the big we thing we wanted to... Yeah, like you said, the adrenaline's going. I think sometimes it's kind of hard to find your footing. Well, and the big thing we wanted, I think, was to do something different. Like, every band just kind of gets up on stage, you know, wearing different outfits, whatever, like a Slayer t-shirt and jeans shorts, and they kind of get up there and just... Are we we good to go? Can we start playing? Oh, hey, we're the next band, and everyone's like, I don't don't care, I'm going for a smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need something different, grab the attention. So we go outside, put the masks on. The people that are out having cigarettes, they're throwing their smokes on the ground, like, all right, what the hell's going on here? Let's go check these guys out. They see us running the group or running the venue, and they're all running after us. Like, oh, yeah, it doesn't ta- it doesn't take out. away from the great musicians. Like, there's plenty of great local bands, and they're they're, you know, fantastic musicians. But, like, you know, especially to stand out, you have to kind of especially to stand out, you have to kind of be a performer mm-hmm. of some sort. And so this just we had this. Idea but what what I like too is you even see this in martial arts, and you see this in other art forms too. The, they'll be too focused on like the perception of how they're coming off and, and lack the substance or maybe uh, the performance doesn't or the show itself doesn't lead up with the flair of the performance but you guys definitely do that both like you guys perform a kick-ass show oh, thank you yeah, in definitely. so many ways and you, and you get the audience involved which I like in so many different ways because the in-between song banter I could tell there's there's some definite camaraderie between you guys it's very much a brothership you know <laughs> on that on that, in that last show definitely was. Well, oh my God, that was your first headlining gig, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Sure was, sure was, and uh, we, you know, we definitely pulled out some things, you know, like that that, that whole thing about uh, who's doing mushrooms tonight. That was just off the cuff, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, guys, I'm doing something different tonight before this song, so let's just just follow oh, yeah. my cue, you know. And it worked out pretty well. It worked out pretty well. Uh, All went out into okay. the crowd and just so, hung out. So, <laughs> the other thing about like we kind of go deeper with it, especially because you know we're working on. Uh, making our own music videos and stuff because we don't have a lot of money mm-hmm. and we just figure it's kind of fun. We like to do this content outside of just the music to keep people involved. And we have these characters uh, that are, are, you know, our bank robber characters. It's like, a, you know, other side of us. And my character is the uh, the weird, nobody really knows who he is, who he is kind of getaway driver guy. And uh, so when during the show, I wanted to be a little bit different for the headlining show to give more like performance. And I thought to myself, what can I do to mess the rest of my band up so like i would i just was doing random stuff whatever i came to my head like jumping off the kit and going to get another beer in the middle of the kit in the the middle of the set and like so my character is like the muscle so he's Mm -hmm. this strong stoic guy who like you know just doesn't want me to go down just like wants to everything to go smooth if it doesn't go smooth i have to take care of it i I think my exact quote was i said it's like white rick ross (laughs) you know in in so many ways you know me obviously if you own like a fisherman's joint I'm like Seattle. Wick Wass. Uh, <laughs> fat back music. Anyway, so, uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, he gets off the stage. Next fat like, music. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you meant to say. <laughs> we, we, we went to elementary school together, so we were both former fat kids. Okay? <laughs> you say former like, like I'm not fat now. God. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're, we're, we're acceptance now. It's acceptance, you guys. Thick boy. 
But yeah, thick boy. I asked, I asked Dave when I, I was like, "Hey, was there anything that you thought was like too over the top?" And he's like, "Yeah, don't smack me." <laughs> he came back on stage, just smack me in the face. I said, that, "That's it. That's uh, that's where I gotta draw the line. Don't smack me in the face." <laughs> uh. So yeah, that actually leads uh, into my next one too, because I've known I've known you, Dave, for like a long time. We've known each other since oh my god, almost like not kindergarten, but like at least third or fourth grade. Well, uh, I mean, we went to the same school since kindergarten. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. I think first or second grade, we, maybe third grade, we were in the same class together. Yeah, yeah. Neither one of us could pay attention. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's I, I feel like, especially when you're at that age, yeah, I, I like, uh, I, I've, I've, I've like noticed this in just like my personal life too. So many of like what people's jobs are is it's so confined and it's so restricted in terms of what they can do. And when you're an artist or when you can, you're going after what you want, maybe for lack of a better term. There's definitely something freeing about that, and it kind of takes you back to when you were a kid and you had that same level of enthusiasm. Because I remember you like still like drumming on your pencil kit, you know, and just like yeah, yeah you know. and I was always drawing something or always yeah. doing something that wasn't listening to the teacher. Well, no, all. of course, because it's monotonous. It was monotonous and boring, you know. I mean, like not not all the time, some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I did great in art class, damn it. Absolutely. All the love to the teachers out there. But like, when did you guys uh, when did you guys form this one and? Uh, like, who was, like, the catalyst, basically? And, and like, what type of music led you to, uh, I guess, kind of come up with your style? Like, what what is it that kind of uh, inspires you to create? Well, I know, like, me, Oliver, and Zach, our bass player, who's not here today, we've all we've been playing music for a couple of years, trying a couple different bands. Um, my current roommate right now plays guitar. He was trying to sing and play guitar for us a few years ago. Didn't work out. Um, tried it just the three of us. Worked on a couple covers. Um, played an original that we now play with Case the Joints. Um, see if it worked out. And didn't really do too too much with it. When we started bringing Dave in, um, it, it was kind of like the catalyst, I guess, that kind of got everything going. He had a lot of creativity. He had a lot of you know stuff to bring to the table. Did he bring any more lint rollers? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen uh, one I have, yet. I have a feeling that he has at least two in his back pocket. He's the lint but, roller king. But yeah, gotta give gotta give a shout out to Zach McKinnis, who is not here, the bass player. He's uh, working diligently at his actual job. Mm-hmm. Um, that boring day job. But it was job. really it was really because of him. Uh, you know, me and Zach have been playing music longer than I think anybody together in this room. Me and Zach, I was in a band with him ten years ago. And uh, he really wanted to play some music, and he kept trying to get stuff together. And he was the one that asked me. And I feel like I think he got. Oh, he asked all of he us. He asked yeah. all of us. He asked all of us. And uh, and started this. So props to him for for getting this all together because he just wanted to play in a rocking band. Had us go to that Starbucks the day after my birthday. Where I was so hungover. I didn't want uh, to yeah. die. <laughs> Have a band meeting at the Starbucks. <laughs> band meeting at Starbucks downtown. Before we were even a band. Band meeting with sunglasses on. Everybody had indoor oh, sunglasses. Man. Yeah, we all got dying. together. We all threw together a short list. Um, everyone picked whatever three or four songs um, of covers that you'd want to play. Like what style you want to bring to the table. And we all picked a song off of every guy's list, basically. Just a covers to start playing. And then yeah. there you kind of had an idea where everyone wanted to go with it. Like. Yeah, which is definitely great because you can see, like, okay, this is what Kyle, you know, wants to kind of emulate me, Dave, Zach. And then uh, when we picked, then picking the other guys from their list, you would find out what they were interested in out of what you were interested in. Wait, was there a style you guys were trying to emulate specifically, or or just did it come together organically? There was there was no set like uh, this is what we want to sound like. It was just that um, I know that the reason why Zach called us all together was was because he wanted to play music live again, right? He wanted to go on stage. He said at least once, at least once I want to play live again, you know, and uh, and so that didn't make us choose a style. Which was we're just like okay, if we're gonna play once, then let's just play music. Let's just play some covers, whatever. And then it, we then we started to like actually write music, you know, and actually write songs. And, and the first couple, if you if you know what, what what songs they are, like you can you can tell that we're just trying to figure out what what the hell we oh. are, right? Like girl at the back of the bar into blind date. Like girl at the back of the bar is like black keys kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But like girl uh, uh, blind date is like like pop punk. You know, it's like like Blink One Eighty Two stuff. Yeah. You know, so like it's we're just trying to figure out where we're at. And uh, I, I like that it's not whiny too. Like sometimes there's so many bands that try and emulate like kind of those pop punk bands, but to me, to me, it comes like very. If that's your style, I get it. But this is just maybe just me personally. I, I hate bands that are like too kind of whiny and just like, oh, let's have something for me up. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just kind of like kind of like bl- not like blaming the world, but kind of like expecting too much from it. Whereas like, what are you trying to put out there, and what are you actually trying to manifest? Sure. You know, because like the the crowd reads off your energy in so many ways. Like that's why that's why I, yeah, like that that's why I wanted to come up with the name rhythm and cues because it really is a rhythm uh, that is intrinsic to any type of vocation or job or art form. 
Well, something you had said actually off air, but before we even got on this, uh, and something that you should know as well, being a comedian yourself, uh, is that there's, there's this old saying in in comedy: uh, it, the crowd hears intent, or it sees it sees intent, right? If you if you go up on there with the intent of fooling them, with the intent of uh, actually being angry at something, and then you say that that something, they won't they won't respond to it, right? Like, so let's say two comedians say the same joke, but one says it with actual anger behind them, mm -hmm. the, the audience won't laugh. Yeah. But if, if, if they're yeah. saying it with the point of making it like, making it like, yeah, this is real, this is something, and, uh, and you know, the audience will actually laugh. So if, if we go up on stage and try to be fake, try to be, well, I mean, we're literally playing characters, but. Yeah, but, <laughs> but if we, it's not fake. It's, it's not fake necessarily. Yeah, they're an aspect of your personality that's, that's yeah, heightened. And, and yeah. It really is. Uh, we, we keep proving that time to time that I have a short temper. Uh, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> but no. Clearly you need a short razor, too. <laughs> ah. Hey. Anyway, so so we, if, if we go up there. Yeah, it's his ball hair trimmer. <laughs> We're editing that out. We can say ball on the radio, right? I don't know. We'll see. It, de <laughs> it depends on the size. Ah. Anyway, so if, if you go up there trying to, you know, do something that's not genuine, they're going to hear it. And they're not gonna like it. Well, it's gonna resonate too because, like, like I said, there's there's enough pressure and there's enough societal pressure. I too, I, I think to uh, not not for like people to be unnatural, but you know, you, there's a certain code of conduct, there's a certain way. If you sign up for a company or like you have uh, a certain place or a certain vocation that doesn't allow, I guess, certain conduct or whatever, you're gonna have issues with that. But sure. art is like the last bastion. I, I you know, I, I've rambled on about it before. I don't want to ramble about it too much, but I, to me, it's there's a time and a place for everything, but in that place, don't mess up my place to yeah. express myself, you know? You don't, like, if everybody knows what's going on, everybody kind of has this social agreement, you don't really have, I get, the proverbial right to kind of come in and kind of enforce your stuff, especially if, if it's an agreed-upon response, you know? For sure. And, I mean, I think when we got together, like, we knew, like, we weren't going to be a metal band or, or, like, a super blues band. We knew it was going to be rockish. Yeah. And then when the characters kind of mm. came out, uh, like I was telling Dave, I don't think it's not fake because it's we're not again trying to fool anybody. We know nobody thinks we're actually bank robbers. Yeah, yeah. although we are. Um, <laughs> but don't be fooled by their boyish charm. But it was it was, it's just this great way again of of expressing a different side of like just having fun. Like we we would do shows, and you know everyone has jobs, and sometimes it got hard to practice. And I remember point like we all said like you know what like we don't have to go up in there and be perfect you know like we don't have to uh be this polished thing like we're doing it mostly for fun and to give other people you know an experience so we would go up there and i know i made it make a couple mistakes every night you know everyone has their things but like it's this fun experience and like nobody's ever come up and be like oh yeah you know i heard you That's mess great. that up you, you mess like, up that part of that song like, or like oh you guys you know oh you're definitely not real bank robbers like no nobody <laughs> <laughs> no kidding right like it's just i don't believe you <laughs> it's just like it's just fun for everybody and that's kind of what i get out of it when i put out there is just like you know it's having a good time all around have you guys had any strange requests uh like because of your characters because uh often you know they say life imitates art but especially with those types of characters have you gotten any like uh i guess interesting venues or, or venues that maybe you never maybe never would have considered playing at but you know when somebody reached out to you, you're like maybe we'll do this maybe we'll give this a shot not yet but i mean we're honestly so like uh, this band is so young like yeah. the people in it were old old farts but well, uh, but but the, well i guess that's that's, that's me and the one the band but um yeah it, it's papa dave I, I, I'm papa not... dave that's me man <laughs> the mother hen the mo <laughs> cluck cluck well mf I've I've uh, I you know I've spent some time in the states and I've you know talked to a couple of people about the band people that I you know know and respect and they've all looked at me and said oh yeah definitely that's cool don't do that in the states Be oh right they're like yeah. don't don't bust into a venue with ski masks oh yeah on that's right yeah in yeah. the USA they're like good thing you're in Canada because if you try that in the United States you're very likely to get shot by the Bart or somebody in the somebody somebody who doesn't well that know and like we have on. very non intimidating money. Like right. <laughs> it's, it's it's what it's what one of my good buddies Gad Holland says. Like you know your your money's actually nice. It's like a you know a son playing hockey with his you know a father playing hockey with his son. There's like you know what do you want to throw on there? It's like a moose. <laughs> throw a beaver on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this actually uh, all of you can answer this individually. Um, is there like a go-to track or song that helps you create? And also is there a track? Uh, 
or any type of musical genre that reminds you of like a loved one or a family member, somebody individually that kind of stands out of any significance in your life. We'll, we'll start with you, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. Not so much like one track, I'd say. Oliver's petting my leg and it feels really good right now. But <laughs> not so much one particular track, but a, like a straight rock. Like you mentioned, the Black Keys, like Led Zeppelin, like any of those hard-hitting rock bands with ultimately very simple kind of riffs and structure. That's a lot of my influence I find comes from a lot of that. Is that like a family thing or like is I was it just some... brought up on all that stuff for sure. Like um dad's a big rock fan for sure. I always took him to concerts growing up and everything, so that's that's where a lot of that came from for me. I'm a rock guy through and through for sure. Gotcha. Yeah. You Oliver? Um, so you know, I'm I'm the same way. I listen to a lot of rock and stuff, grew up on it. I uh, went through a lot of different genres through my my ages of playing drums, you know, Travis Barker and stuff like that. But in terms of creating, as of recently, there's an artist named John Bellion who uh, is not anywhere near our genre at all. He's very more pop, hip-hop a little bit, stuff like that. But uh, he has great, great music. And on his uh, YouTube, he has all these behind the scenes of each song, and it's just him making it. And you can just watch his creative process. And so when I watch stuff like that, it just makes me think about making music is so that's a really big push. Does he show you like the notes he's creating or does he kind of uh just like give you a glimpse into I guess his day to day? No, it's it's it, there's like, you know, a one video for each track. I recommend to anybody who's a music fan and so like there's like a 20 minute video of the one track and when he's creating, he's very uh like he'll he'll beatbox something, right? And he'll just get this flow and then he'll make it on the drums. Sometimes even sampling his own beatbox. And then he just hears in his head what he wants for piano, so he'll start playing piano and he's like He's working out lyrics, but he's like scatting. So he's working out the melody before he has the lyrics. And then he'll come up with the lyrics. And it's like this 20 minute long video of just the buildup of him making these songs. And that to me is just fantastic because it, it's what I feel like. I feel like I can't do that for like, I'm not an instrumentalist in terms of guitar or anything. But when I'm playing the drums, like I, I can hear in my head, you know, what I want to play. And then I, I can put that forward. So that's a big inspiration for me. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a definite visual component. You know, which I think uh, it's not that you can see the notes. I, I watched some type of DC show where literally they receive like the the superhero could see the notes and they could like play it and grasp it out of the air and use it as a weapon. You know. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I thought I think that part's interesting. And Very you cool. It's like a synesthetic type thing, and and yeah. And then in terms of uh, just a quick for reminds me of my family. I grew up listening to the Tragically Hip. Okay. It reminds Ooh. me of my dad. Uh, R.I.P. Gord Downey. You know, I love that man with a passion. And uh, whenever I put on anything tragically hip, it just brings me back to being being a kid at home with my family. And, and their styles, like what, what kind of like poppy or is it a little more country? It's 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 rough because they're like rock, kind of country, and like certain albums, uh, a little bit of, a little pop in there. It's it, it's hard. Like you can't really describe them. Like every one of their songs is unique. Like you can hear that it's them but it's hard to place them into any one genre i yeah. love that canadian they're, rock. they're one of the biggest rock bands in the world and they, they like but also they're canadian they, yeah you know the, uh gord downey's past obviously the, we, we all know that in canada but uh you know they, they're one of the greatest rock bands of all time and it was they they, they created what rock is right part of they, yeah. part, they, made, they, they made part of what rock is now it's amazing yeah, no, I actually like uh, I like bands where you can have like a different sound every album, or at least where they experiment a bit more. Yeah, um, he's, he, they would just flow off of like I don't even know where they got their inspiration from. I want to find that place and go there because, man, it's probably it's, Bob Cajun it's, or something. It's the hundredth Meridian. It's the hundredth Meridian. Yeah. Also, little known fact: when they first started out, they had a saxophone player. Oh, jeez. Was a very I'm sure it was a different sound. Does that mean we need to get a saxophone player so we can start getting famous? Uh, no, they got rid of the saxophone player. Then they got famous. So I, I'm shaped like a saxophone, depending on the time of day. I'm sure Dave so. will play anytime you want. <laughs> That's getting cut out. Don't edit that out. Oh but, man, <laughs> I think he might have it's to. Okay, he said, "Blow me a kiss." <laughs> I heard it. Blow out your birthday candles. <laughs> That's mean, Dave. Don't do that. <laughs> it's your guys' it's time. It's okay. Then I get the wish. I, su- I support your choice. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so my answer for that. Um, for how I like what makes me want to create is uh, it's actually a lot of hip hop, believe it or not. But like uh, like current current hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Not, and not, I don't mean like Takeshi and uh, who else? Who's that? Takeshi Six Nine and all them. 
Billie Never Eilish heard of her. girl. Billie, Billie, she's, she's, Billie she's, she's great. She's actually great. But she, anyway, she actually is. The, and like, what, what about like any ASAP? Because like, I've been on like an ASAP and Action Bronson. It's a, it, Action Bronson. Action Bronson. I mean, Bronson. I've I've been called Action Bronson so many times in my life. But uh, I, those, those people need a better insult. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I was like, hey, I'll, I'll take it. He's an amazing rapper. And um, an amazing cook, I hear. Like, he 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 used to be a gourmet chef before yeah. he's a rapper. Just so y'all know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> What, what was that? I know so it's, it's like it's like his Wikipedia. We're just <laughs> it's okay. So uh, so so yeah. So what I what I want to create it's uh, a lot of uh, either hip hop or like lo fi, uh, like lo fi just beats, you know. And and that that makes you go like, what's that chord? And then I go, well, oh, that's a cool chord. I'll I'll use that somewhere. Usually for my solo stuff. I know I've mentioned it a lot here, and we're talking about the band, but like, but I've I've, I've also heard things that like even like little bits of lyrics that I've been like. It's a cool lyric. I'll alter that and maybe put it in my pocket for something else later on. Um, and then for for family stuff, like anything about my family is like again rock. Like all of us, I think I think we you know we all grew up on rock a little bit. And uh, it's Def Leppard, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, oh. Rush, like that's that kind right. Of stuff. That's right. That that's that's where I cross our paths cross rather because I I was never into like the 80s metal stuff when I was growing up. I was kind of similar to you, more R and B, more like current hip hop, right. like Ludacris, Eminem. Uh, right. You know those type of like mainstreamers like Ja Rule, but then as yeah. you get older, like you, that's actually it leads me into my next uh, topic. It's the do you prefer listening to certain albums with or without headphones? Because I found the best thing about like hip hop albums, and this crosses over to any genre of music, is when you hear the headphones, the hooks have like a more, uh, what's the word? They, they maybe have like a bit more tone, or they have a lot more definition that you hear. It's, it's Just fuller. with the reg- yeah, a lot more fuller, and then like you can hear a. You know, maybe an interlude you never would hear, like a different melody of the song that maybe they did some reverb on. Sure. Uh, and, you know, as, as somebody who actually went to school for uh, audio engineering, um, uh, I know wh- exactly why that is. Um, it's a production trick to actually uh, make the chorus sound bigger than it actually is. They're, they, they'll they not only add layers, they're going to add, add more things, but... <laughs> <laughs> and we had a sneezing sound effect. I pressed the button, Oops. you guys. Oops! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so they'll they'll it's a Russian trick to to make this chorus sound bigger. So, all right, I'll, I'll show that now. No, 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 no. it's okay. No, I want to go. We should go backwards. Not be God. You got to answer the question: What you like listening to? Like, oh, when you right. when you create, basically, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So the question I'm going to answer now Thank is uh, <laughs> is um. It's like the SpongeBob interview. It's like two hours later. Two hours later. <laughs> Albums I listen to with headphones on instead of, right? That, that was the question? Yeah. Uh, headphones are, are like also what's, uh, is there a track or like a genre that you use as a catalyst when you're trying to create or that kind of, you know, spark uh, sparks your creativity? Okay. Well, I mean, we we, we sort of went over that, but the, uh, like like R&B is a, is a big one for me as well. You know, uh, Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean's another big one for me. Okay. Uh, Frank Ocean, Earl Sweatshirt, like those two together. Like that is that is what I aspire to be. Even though I'm not a rapper, I can't, I, I can't rap, but uh, I would uh, the, this that R and B style, doing runs with your vocals and everything. Uh, just interrupt. Dave can rap. He's just putting himself down like, legitimately. Hey, thanks. Bars, bars, B-A-R. hot fire. Bars, bars. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then um, uh, headphones. M- music with headphones. Uh, you know what's great to listen to actually with headphones on is again lo-fi beats. I know it's a, you know, I keep talking about it, but like, you know, that like music to study, uh, to like study to on, on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have like, the, the playlist and stuff. Because yeah. that, that hits like some sort of octaves with the, the, the lower bass tones and stuff. Oh, man. Can't beat it. Because it just hits your ears and it makes you feel some type of way. You know I like that too. Yeah, it, but it also creates an ambiance too. I find like, because uh, you see like the, the Beats headphones where they're like noise canceling. Those I think are the best to use with that if you can get your hands on that. But also, I like uh, I like the effects and I like the flow of it too. It's a very natural flow. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for me, uh, this is a tough one because I, you know, it, it's tough to, you know, I could listen to it either way on a good sound system or in some good headphones. Um, but um, the difference for me is like when you listen to headphones, I feel like. I'm falling into the world of the music, right? Like I'm enveloping in the music. Everything else is going to go away. And when you play it in like a, you know, through speakers and such, you're taking that music and putting it into your world, right? So your world's hmm. still there, and now the music is taking over your world. It's more of an input output type. Yeah. Of, so like whether whether I, mean. I want to be absorbed into it or whether I want it to 
come into my world, right? So I find like, especially if I'm doing housework or anything, you know, sitting around, um, like I love putting on 80s playlists, you know, just like that 80s pop, you know, like synthesizers, like oh, heavy synth, synth pop, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, like the Donnie Darko soundtrack and stuff like that is amazing. Just that, that's some slower stuff in there too, but like, you know, uh, stuff that you can dance to, I love, and that's what I'll put out in, you know, through my speakers. And then uh, definitely I agree with Dave on the lo-fi, like the beats to study to is just great for popping in your headphones and doing anything to sleeping, you know, writing, uh, walking, all that stuff. And then, um, yeah, I also, but I mean, I also really love walking down the street uh, to anything that has like a good beat uh, because it keeps my pace going. So like I listen to some pretty, pretty heavy stuff like Prophets of Rage and like I love hip hop and rock mix with that kind of stuff with that like beat or electronic music as well. Steady 120 BPM. <laughs> and uh, kind of going around with like the the headphone thing, I, I I honestly I don't use them very much. I've I've got a nice set of Sennheisers. I don't use them too too much. I prefer like a full stereo system. The main thing with that is uh, I've played bass a lot longer than I've played guitar. I've been kind of a or what did I say? I played drums a lot longer than I played guitar, and I've been kind of a bass head because of it. I think so. I like that feeling of the big the kick drum in your chest and everything. You don't get that with headphones. Even when I'm like playing drums or playing around, like playing along with music, I've got headphones on so I can hear it, but I've got the speakers in the room going at the same time, so that kick drum is still hitting you right in the chest and everything. Absolutely. One that kind of opened my eyes, I guess, to like just different effects you can do and you know panning and all that kind of crap that all the old um, psychedelic bands were popular for was uh, "Obscured by Clouds" by Pink Floyd. That oh was, yes. That was a, it's a great track. And then one that really kind of jumped out at me, um, my dad came home in time with a, a Blu-ray disc of uh, Rush's Moving Pictures, and I remember throwing the track on, and what it was, rather than just like, a, uh, you know, just like high quality audio, it was like five, well, it was meant to be 7.2, meant for seven speakers, two subwoofers, but I just had a 5.1 system, but the entire track, like for YYZ, for example, was like panning all around the room behind you, so all the bells in the intro to YYZ was like, ding, 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 all around the room, and I was like, holy crap, like this is, and then the whole song beyond that was just like so encompassing, so that's, I'm, I'm a big like stereo guy, I guess, rather than a headphone guy, for sure. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of people know the difference, too, so like, it's, it's inter that's an interesting breakdown, too. Yeah, like that was, was eye-opening. Just yeah, another sure. little another thing, because you're talking about, like, that's a definitely a different way to listen to it, even than mm. just stereo or, like, headphones, like the yeah. surround sound. Yeah. And I had the opportunity recently, a friend of mine had a thing called a sub pack that a lot of artists wear. It's like a like a vest, and it has a sub in it, and it that's connects cool. to your, your wireless system, and it, like, it plays the sub on your chest. And if anybody ever gets a chance to use that, it literally, if you're a bass head, yeah. it makes you feel they sound awesome. feel like you're standing at the concert in front of that sub, and it's great. It's beautiful. Hell yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna, this is going to be the last question. Then uh, we're actually going to give you guys a couple of their tracks that they've uh, just released. Uh, so we're going to give you guys a little C-Jam exclusive for you right now just because we love you all so much. Um, so, yeah, this is the last uh, question I'm going to ask you. Um, is there a song that maybe sparks some emotional response when it comes to a first love or maybe that reminds you of uh, a time in your life, maybe in your formative years, that reminds you of a first love or anything uh, from maybe that time? I'll go first. <laughs> Please do. Uh, How so long is that list? <laughs> yeah. I'll try and keep it short. Uh, so for the first love thing, like the uh, the band Him. Remember that band? They're like big no. with like like. Is the, Infernal Majesty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're uh, Biogram. a band from from Finland. They they were called uh, Love Metal, and like <laughs> that was like their, their genre that they they went by. Um, and like it was all these like metal songs, but the lyrics were about like uh, a lot of weird stuff. But the the ones that like, popped in my head was this song called uh, "Join Me in Death," which is about. Loving somebody so much that you're gonna make a pact to kill yourself together to join them in death. And it's, they, it's, it's like a Romeo and Juliet. Sure, yeah, sure. Maybe or or uh, Montagues and the Capulets. Or uh, Hitler and his girlfriend, or whatever her name was. Ava, yeah. Ava. Ava. <laughs> <laughs> Ava, Ava Brown. Um, so yeah, so that's that's like like first love, and then like I've always said this: Earl Sweatshirts, I don't like S word, and going out, uh, and I don't go outside. That album, that album, literally, you put it on, I am. In the floor, I'm depressed as all hell. I don't know what it is about that album, but it just it just makes you feel that, like immediately. I could be the best, have the best day of my life, or the best day I've ever had. If you put that album on, I'm gonna feel depressed, and I'm gonna want to stay in it. And I'm gonna listen to that album multiple times, have a couple of beers on my own, you know, have a bad time. So that's that's have a bad but a great time. Also, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Exactly. 
You get to, you get to listen to your stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get to listen to myself talk. Basically. Yeah. Kyle, you're next. Oh, I can't. I can't go next. Uh, yes, you can. Okay. You got so, this, Kyle. Well, if I got to think of something for an emo- emotional response, it's probably um, one of our own, and I say this probably at every show, and I think you guys probably knew I was going to talk about it, but yeah, it's a song we have called Waiting, and I wrote it. It's actually about, um, you know, being in a situation, maybe like a relationship you don't want to be in, and you're, you're waiting for that right person to kind of walk through the door. And I wrote it, so I was, I was with somebody at the time, but I'd always kind of had the idea, even like when I was single, just like, you know, you know the right one's coming home to you kind of thing. So we, we wrote a song about it, and we played every show, and it it's always seems to go over pretty well. But that's always been kind of my take on that tune, for sure. Yeah. It's, it re, it's very, uh, the crowd can re, like resonate with it as well. Like it resonates yeah. with the crowd. It's, I, I heard that one, too. At, uh, when well, I, I think you everyone's going... kind of been in that situation before, whether it's a relationship yeah. or... You know, whatever, waiting for something better. Basically, it's, it's the only slow one we have in the set. The, the whole the whole set is all fast songs. It's the only slow song we have. Yeah, and you see how how we can't take ourselves seriously because the end of that song, triple times, <laughs> like a double times. Right. Yeah. Even then. Up. Yeah. It does. Like it up. picks up to a speedy. Although that that's that was Kyle's writing for uh, like like a kind of like a happy ending. Like it's kind of sad, but like no, it's it's gonna happen type ending. Pick it up so. at the end. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now everyone's looking at me. We are. Uh. So. Two two songs come to mind from two of two of my big loves in my life. Uh, one, uh, what you guys don't never thought I was in love. <laughs> Look at these guys are looking at me I like. Can tell. What? <laughs> it is the it is the Mary it is the Mary season. We can see your Grinch heart from over here. Right. It's it's grown three sizes today. No, uh, your heart. Hopefully oh. your stencil does as well. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, beard humor, you guys. Beard humor. Yeah, beard, Always, beard. Oh, beard. Yes. Just, just hear the shuffling on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Dave. Um, so, <laughs> very first, very first love of my life. Back when I was was really young, you know, grade three on unrequited love for for like five years, and then we finally got together. And I would listen to a song by the Tragically Hip called Grace Two, uh, like, and it just was really like every time I would listen to it, I would just think about being with that person, and I wasn't like with that person yet. And then we did get together, and. It, like I still listen to it, but like it was definitely kind of a sad but good feeling. You know that feeling of like being in love, but not having it. So it's kind of you feel the joy of the love, but you feel like so far so close. But it's, it's kind more, of bittersweet. It's more about like the possibility of yeah, it. Yeah, like, Yes, the possibility yeah. of it, right? Like that that young love. You know, that's what it is. It's, mm-hmm. it's less realistic than when you grow up, and then you know it's becoming about like what's your credit score, and you know, <laughs> and then because that's what I look for in a lady. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can you get me out of debt? You know. <laughs> If, if you're going for a minus five, yeah. no, no, no need to like apply. It. Minus fives, no need to apply. Dude, well, I mean, no, feel, I'm I'm desperate. Please apply. I'm I'm just I'm hel- I'm helping you out, man. I'm helping oh. you out with like your new like handle, you know, wing, wing for like a dating man, site. Like, yeah, yeah. You and gotta then, think of like a fancy site. <laughs> the, the second song is uh, "Dig" by Incubus, which was oh. another big one uh, during another uh, relationship of mine, the second true love that I had. That uh, I was away. Um, for multiple reasons, and this song was just kind of, uh, you know, a savior for me. Hmm. Oh, and Milky Chance, uh, they—it's a band or a group. They have one song. Uh, damn it! Now I'm gonna forget it. Uh, stolen, uh, stolen dance. I think it is by Milky Chance. It's a great song. You should listen to it. Very, very romantic as well. Is that their only single? The one song they. Have? It was like their one single. Yeah. They just released. A, they have another single now, but but yeah, it was their main one. So that's me. It's fantastic. Open book. So yeah, we're not we're not done with you guys, but uh, I loved having you guys on for the show today. Um, so I do have a couple dates that we want to plug. We're gonna plug all your social medias. On Facebook, it is just Case the Joint Band, all lowercase, and then on the IGs, on the Instagrams, it is Case again, lowercase uh, underscore the underscore Joint underscore Band. And then you guys are playing on December 21st at Fog Lounge with Strike Tyson. Uh, it's tickets are five dollars in advance and seven dollars at the door. Get them now because they're going quick. They are going quick. Fog is a very intimate venue as well, so I, I encourage you guys to come there. I love the, Fog. The, like this, the sound, the sound resonates perfectly. Yeah, and, and there's only I think there's only ten tickets left already. Wow. Okay, like the, ten left the, the, as of right now. So yeah. we'll see. get them, you know. Also, you can tell we like case underscore the underscore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got sense. to it late. You know, you, you had to put mass in between all the all the words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for plugging all that. No problem. Oh yeah. Also on January third, you guys are doing C Jam Fest, the aforementioned C Jam Fest. Yes. C Jam uh, Kickstart. Kickstart. C Jam Kickstart. C Jam Kickstart. Which 
which as of recording this podcast has not yet been announced. So this is a exclusive. exclusive. Yeah, rhythm and cues exclusive. Right rhythm and cues exclusive. There's gonna be amazing sound effects there, you guys. I I believe it. Dave's doing them right now. He is. <laughs> It's more like, Nintendo, Academy? more like Nintendo 64 sound effects. <laughs> yeah, that's my dial-up internet. <laughs> that's my dial-up internet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, love to having you guys on for sure. I'm going to have you great again. Being here. Thank you so and, much. And uh, yeah, we're going to bring you guys uh, some exclusive songs. What are the track names that you guys are going to play for the listeners? <laughs> we have no idea. where We'll do it when we get there. Let's let's. Wait, if we got two, we'll do uh, Girl at the Back of the Bar is uh, our single. Yeah. So we'll play that yeah, one. Yeah. And then we'll play waiting. I think we should play waiting. We should play waiting because he talked okay, about it. Okay, absolutely. It's Kyle's, uh, it's his, his little, his romance jam. That's perfect. Let's do it. All right. Better than romance jelly. Thank you so much for listening. You have been listening to Rhythm and Cues. I am DJ Dave Squeaky Wheels. I hope y'all had a great time. Next week we have another uh, great lineup of shows, which I will announce when we get there. Thank you so much. Y'all take care. See you. Have fun. Happy holidays. And uh, let's see if you guys can wait enough for this song. <laughs>
things get rough And the sun just never seems to shine But there's a light I've seen in her eyes I know she's out there Case the joint, everybody. Case the joint. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Rhythm and Cues. Woo.